In the decorative concrete surfacing industry, one of the fastest growing fields in the world today, one company stands head and shoulders above the rest. Who are we? We're Superstone, the one-stop center that enjoys the worldwide reputation as manufacturer of the highest quality color hardeners, liquid and powder release agents, solvent and water-based sealants, chemical stains, polymer overlays, everything you need for installation of the most beautiful, natural appearing and durable decorative concrete surfaces possible. Additionally, we have over 100 different patterns of stamping tools and templates in stock for immediate shipment. Why is Superstone the premier company in the decorative concrete surfacing industry today? Quality comes from total commitment to product superiority, excellence, a cut above the rest. And service? Service is filling orders at the exact time that they're promised. Service is providing technical assistance in solving problems that arise in the field. Service is also providing our customers with detailed step-by-step -step instructions of not only basic installation techniques, but all the newest developments and innovations designed to make beautiful, natural installations that eliminate callbacks and develop an ever-increasing supply of profitable referrals. Let's add another item to quality and service. Dependability. Dependability means being there for our customers day after day, year after year providing reliability with the experience that over four decades of continuous service can provide. Let's visit a recent Superstone seminar and follow the step-by-step -step demonstration of the proper way to install a beautiful stamped concrete surface. Here we see the placement of the first of two concrete slabs on which we'll be working today. The forms are in place and we're going to pour a four-inch slump You'll note that all the normal concrete placement procedures apply. Screeding, troweling, no different than any other placement, including edging the slab and troweling out surface ridges and other marks. Now we're into the first step of the actual stamping process, broadcasting the color hardener onto the fresh concrete surface. This provides the base color for the pattern adds density to the concrete surface and produces outstanding surface strength and wear resistance. Under normal circumstances, a pail of color hardener covers approximately 100 to 120 square feet. Lighter colors may require additional material. The application of color hardener is actually a two-step procedure. 60 to 65 percent of the Superstone color hardener you're using should be broadcast in the first application. When the surface is properly covered, a bull float is used to float this first application of color hardener into the concrete. The second application is now applied, making sure that all thinly coated areas receive ample material so that the surface is uniform in color. This application of color hardener is also floated into the surface, this time using a Fresno. To achieve optimum uniformity, float the second coat in a direction perpendicular to the first whenever possible. In this particular demonstration, we've elected to install a 12-inch border around the slab. When a different color band is desired, extra care should be taken to ensure that no contamination of colors take place. To prevent this, we're using a shield while broadcasting the second color. After each application of the color hardener, scrape off any excess material that has fallen onto the forms and use an edging tool to ensure a clean, crisp edge on the slab. Now we're ready to broadcast the release agent. Superstone Release Agent is a clear or pigmented water repellent powder that forms a lubricant barrier between the fresh concrete and the stamping tools. A darker color release applied to a lighter color hardener, as we're doing here, creates a more pronounced two-tone effect and deeper textured appearance. A 30-pound pail of Superstone Release Agent will cover approximately 1,000 square feet and is available in 13 premixed colors, plus clear. For special projects, 
Custom colors are available. Since we're using a border here, we need to shield it while we broadcast the release powder onto the field, and vice versa, of course. Any contamination that does occur may be touched up at this time. Now that the release agent has been uniformly applied, we're ready to start stamping. To stamp the concrete properly, you should have enough tools to span the entire width of the slab, plus one more to start the next row. At this point, make sure that you're starting off on a straight edge that is perfectly true, and be sure that you're aware of the proper directional placement of the tools. If you're uncertain, consult Superstone before the job begins. The stamping tools are color-coded to produce a more realistic texture and appearance when properly placed. For best results, refrain from placing two identically colored tools together. Once the tools have been properly placed on the concrete, don't attempt to move them until they've been stamped. Frequently, the use of an impact tool is not necessary for stamping of the first row. Just the weight of the mechanic walking upon them is sufficient. As stamping progresses, you'll need to lightly tamp with the impact tool. Carefully lifting one corner of the tool will allow you to see the depth of the impression. Stronger stamping will probably be necessary toward the end of the job. As each row is stamped, the tools are removed and replaced onto the following roll. If a border is used, such as we're doing here, it should be stamped at the same rate of progression as the field, so that the continual curing of the slab doesn't prevent a clean imprint. Once again, don't forget to use shields when broadcasting the release agent onto the border. Now the stamping is completed, and this is a good time to clean the tools, since the concrete will need to set a little more before any necessary touch-ups are attempted. The consistency of the slab is such that we can now proceed with touching up any irregularities in the stamped surface. If, for example, a grout line is indistinct or inconsistent, we can correct it by using a wide hand tool. Any holes or honeycombing present in the slab may be corrected by applying a slurry mix of color hardener and water. Once the slurry mix is set, Dust with release agent and apply texture to this. Use the thin texture skin that is available from Superstone to match the pattern you're using. Since the stamp slab now needs to properly cure before the final steps, let's move to our second slab. The only difference between this and the slab we've just stamped is that this slab has been designed with a step and a cantilever edge, both of which will show you how to color, stamp, and properly finish. It's important to remove the forms at the proper time. If the slab has not cured long enough, sagging may occur. If the forms are removed too late, it can become difficult to stamp. Here we're removing the stakes and we see that the concrete has set enough for us to continue. The stamping tools are laid out as we did on the preceding slab, but as you approach the step, it's likely that there won't be room enough to place a normal tool. In this case, we're using a flex mat, or thin flexible tool, which permits us to texture right up to the edge of a step, wall, column, or any other vertical surface. The color is applied to the face of the step by mixing color hardener and water to a plaster-like consistency, then plastering it onto the riser. Once all vertical areas have been plastered, broadcast the release agent in the same manner as a horizontal application. The vertical stamping is done with a flex tool, tamping lightly so that the setting of the concrete is not disturbed. Lightly roll the tool over the top edges to produce a clean, natural effect. When stamping the top of the step, take care not to exert enough pressure to fracture the edge of the riser. Once again, the use of the wide hand tool will serve to further define the grout lines, especially at the riser tread interface. Returning to the first slab, we've allowed three days for proper setting of the pigment. So now it's time to remove the excess release agent from the surface. This may be done by pressure cleaning or blowing, brooming and rinsing, as we're doing here. 
By using a pressure cleaner with approximately 2,000 PSI, you can control the amount of release washed off and obtain the desired contrast of the antiquing effect. Now, the surface has been allowed to dry completely and we're applying the first coat of Superstone Clear Sealer. Note how the color springs to life and the texture immediately appears deeper. Superstone Clear Sealer may be rolled, sprayed, or brushed at a coverage rate of 150 to 250 square feet, depending on the surface texture. When the first coat has dried sufficiently, apply the second coat of Superstone Clear Sealer. When a slip-resistant surface is desired, add Super Grip to the second coat of sealant, following directions on the label. Let's take a look now at the beautiful results of our labors here. Keeping in mind that pedestrian traffic should not be allowed on the sealed surface for a minimum of 24 hours and no vehicular traffic should be permitted for at least 48 hours. Keep rubber tired vehicles off the surface for a minimum of 72 hours. Remember, there's a right way and a wrong way to do the job. Doing it the right way the first time with state-of-the-art Superstone products eliminates costly callbacks and promotes optimum customer satisfaction, resulting in higher profits from referrals.